Next little detail I need to take care of with the titch is fitting the cast saddle. This is the large boiler, so I'm using a cast saddle that I ordered from England. I'll, I forget which company. I'll, I'll uh, make sure to state that in the future. But it, I have to grind away a space for the lubricator, and I may have to do more than just that because the lubricator lid, which I made according to instructions, it actually is very close as you can see. Um, but anyway, that, so that, regardless, the, the uh, space needs to be machined out for the lubricator body itself. So what I'm doing, I'm using my pillar tool, which I love and I'm still so thrilled that I made this. And if you're interested in making a universal pillar tool, I do have a build series on my YouTube channel here. So what I'm doing for safety, of course, using a drill press, you want you don't want to just hold the part, especially with bronze or brass, because uh, a drill bit can catch and um, and fling the part, tear tear your hand apart. So using a set of woodworking clamps here, and I'm drilling two holes. I'll drill a hole at each corner here, basically that so that then I can cut it with a bandsaw or a Dremel and I'll have, first it'll give me nice radius corners, but also it'll help prevent cracks. After drilling the holes on the corners, uh, as you can see, I used a Dremel with a cutoff to liberate the little uh, area that needs to make clearance for the lubricator. And I'll smooth that out a little bit and we'll give it a test fit. All right, here's the cast saddle with the relief cut in it and the good news is it fits fine and there's enough room for the pipes there'll be room for the snifter to be put in there and it's set at an inch and three eighths back from the front that's exactly what what it's supposed to be it could actually be a little bit closer to the front of the locomotive frame the bad news is and uh, as i suspected uh, there's just not enough room really for the filler cap <clears throat> for the lubricator had I made it a little closer to the center, that probably would have been fine. But uh, as it stands now, that's not going to work. So I have an idea about taking the cap off, flipping it around the other way, and I may have to cut a notch in the uh, front bumper there, which I don't think it'll be a big problem. I'm not excited about doing that, but I think it's a better solution than anything else I can think of. Hey, one cool thing, the reason I take these pictures is as I got to thinking about reversing the lubricator opening and cu cutting a notch in the top of the buffer beam, I was worried, like, is that going to ruin the looks? And then I realized, okay, glad I have this picture here. It looks like the, the plate gets laid across the entire frame, so it is not going to mess up that. I can cut away all I need to uh, make a hole in there to make room for the lubricator. Yeah. Playing around with some solutions. One thing I could do, if I could live with the offset oil oil pump here, oil filler, which is not that unusual. I mean, most bigger locomotives have the, the oil filler completely all the way over to the side. I could leave it here, and uh, then I wouldn't have to notch the buffer beam. I put this little piece across there as an illustration. But... I don't know. I, I think that would bother me. Plus, this still this would be still somewhat close to the uh, the saddle. So I think what I'm going to do is stick with my original plan, completely reverse it. I will have to put a notch in the buffer beam. The other thing I'm going to have to do is put a notch in the cap. I forgot about this, but the existing cap has a notch there for the ratchet mechanism. So I'll need to put a notch, if I do reverse it around completely this way, which I like the look of, I will have to put a notch on this side as well that matches the notch there. Okay, there's the notched and relocated assembly there. Didn't really even need to take that much out, but 
plenty of room looks good and that's going to help out tremendously now that I have uh, it gives me plenty of space to put the cast set the cast saddle wherever it needs to be interestingly I now will need to make some notches for the inlet the air in inlet these pipes right here steam inlet pipes so that'll come next this is a good stopping place for tonight and again very pleased with how that mod worked out and the next step with the smoke box was to set the cast saddle in place and this is a little tricky what I ended up doing the idea uh, let me dimensions are it needs to be an inch and three-eighths back from the front bumper and the bottom of the saddle is supposed to be seven sixteenths of an inch above the frame rails so a little tricky to measure a curved surface like that and a little awkward thing to hold so it's the perfect idea for some crazy glue so what I did was I crazy glued a piece of 16th inch thick brass across the top as you can see I did it at a little angle so I had a corner to go into with the um, with the part and I'll explain that in a second and then I also had another piece of 16th inch brass just loose back here that I could scoot into place and use both of those as measuring Thing. So after I, I filed and got it so it fit carefully, I even put some aluminum foil down there to support it so it wouldn't sag. And I did notch out some places for the steam pipes, as you can probably see there. Um, so I put crazy glue on both sides of it, and I'll just demonstrate on this because I'm trying to do it while I'm videotaping. But I, I preset the uh, the dial the digital caliper at. Um, three-eighths of an inch. So three-eighths plus the sixteenth inch brass is seven sixteenths. So I was able to check. I put it in place. You know, there was a little bit of tension. Um, put it in place with the crazy glue and then check the measurement real quick on fore and aft. As you can see, it's nice and level. So basically, it's kind of late tonight. I'm going to let that dry. And then what I'll do tomorrow is set the boiler in place with a half inch block across the frame and just just to get an idea about like is that about the right height before I drill and tap any holes that will hold the smoke box saddle in place but basically I need to get the saddle in place and you know fixed and then I can work on all the stuff that goes with the smoke box which I have ready to go right there and the other thing I need to do is work on the ash pan and grate system so get the basically the foundation work done and then that's everything that goes underneath the boiler and then I can finish up on the boiler and the actual mounts so kind of interesting kind of a little puzzle piece by piece getting it together okay I let the crazy glue dry overnight and I did a little test fit here with the boiler and a half inch steel bar underneath and I, I'm thinking that is looking just perfect there's just enough room for the thickness of the smoke box here, the copper. So it's perfect. I think I'm gonna, uh, at this point, what I'll do, there's a little hole here that coincides with the side of the smoke box. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and drill and tap and put in a, a 256 screw on either side. And then I'll address the front. I'll bring you back for that. Okay, I got little 256 screws in the back corner of each of the smoke box. Next, I'm going to take advantage of these pre-drilled holes, if you can see that, here you go, that were already in the frame, and I couldn't understand what LBSC was talking about, but what I think he's talking about is making a little, basically, angle iron that would mate the front with those holes. So, what I decided to do in scrounging through my stash of stuff, I have a little half-inch square steel tube and as you can see, I've cleaned it up and marked it off. I'm going to cut that off at 3 eighths of an inch long. And I'm going to also make a diagonal cut across this way to, to make two angles. Then I can clamp or glue the angles in there, drill the hole through the frame, drill and tap that, and then drill and tap another hole into the, uh, into the smoke box, or excuse me, the saddle itself. Here's my miniature angle iron pieces 
So far I've crazy glued them to the cast saddle and I've got a screw holding them in place, a 256 screw. <laughs> I'm not sure how that is going to work, but obviously it's not permanent. My idea is to let this dry overnight. The glue's only on this side. So <clears throat> tomorrow to uh, cut, cut along here with an X-Acto knife and carefully pull the whole assembly out and then drill and tap the screws and uh, into the little miniature angle iron pieces. Right now I kind of wish I'd have gone ahead and made extra holes here that I could mark just in case the whole assembly falls apart. But I'll scribe a line so I can locate it close enough if it does come apart. All right, I'm back the next day and the crazy glue held here in the little corners and in examining this, like I said, I wish I would have put some holes in there. It would have been a little easier to start, but in examining this, I think my best bet is to go ahead and take the bumper beam, the buffer beam, back off. I just put it back on after fixing the thing with the oil fill cap there, the lubricator. But I'll take it back off, and then I'll be I'll have direct access, be able to drill and tap the 256 holes in there. Might as well try to do that before I uh, use the heat gun to loosen everything up. So I'm gonna take it back off again, drill and tap the holes. I'll bring you back, um, show you some of the when when it's done, basically. All right, here's the finished view of the little angle irons with screws in place. Glad I took the bumper off. That was the easiest way to make that fit happen. Some of the tools I used, I used one of these really long center drills to make my initial hole, the starter hole. Then I used the Dremel here with the number 50 drill bit to drill in. That worked fine into the through the steel and into the cast saddle. And then <laughs> kind of a funny long reach solution, but here's a 256 tap with the miniature needle nose vice grips it gave me the reach I needed to tap those holes and then I used some little tiny 256 brass screws in the uh, in the casting and some longer well, actually some button head ones that I cut off to fit in the sides of the frame there so overall I think we're ship shape there. I'm going to put everything back together and we'll start working on the saddle, the smoke box, and all the rest of the fittings that go hey with again, it. Again folks, a little break in the action from the machining of parts. I got home from work today and there was a package in the mailbox for me from Blackgates Engineering and I made a mail order from them. I've never ordered anything from them before but uh, if you've watched Keith Appleton's videos you'll, you've seen him go and buy stuff from them. One of the things they sell is this set of miniature wrenches that are laser cut and I went ahead and bought a set of those because there's so many miniature fasteners on the Titch and other small locomotives that I thought it'd be pretty handy to have. Obviously you cut those apart and however you like. Um, these are, they make them straight like this or angled. I went ahead and got the straight ones. Another thing I ordered was this the water gauge. I was thinking about making my own water gauge but it's a, a little bit of a complicated part plus I saw that theirs was reasonably priced and I thought you know I'll go ahead and order it because I'd like to see the size of the parts that they make because mine are obviously my blower valve came out larger than this anyway um, it's a nice I haven't even taken this apart yet but it looks like a nice set and um, it is smaller threaded than my boiler is, so I'll have to make an adapter, but we'll cover that later. Um, another thing I ordered a complete assembly from them is the safety valve. This is for the Titch. And uh, I noticed, I was thinking about making my own safety valve. It would have been an interesting experience. But I noticed the, the design in the book, there was no locking mechanism on it. And this one does have a locking mechanism. It's preset to 80 PSI which should be just right for the titch. And it's a nice looking part, so I went ahead and, it wasn't that expensive, I went ahead and mail ordered it. It'll save me a little time in getting up and running. A Couple of other things I ordered was some copper washers. These will be handy for clocking the, the fasteners into the right position. You know, a lot of American locomotives, they use pipe threads and you can kinda tighten it down and, and clock the, the fastener or the fitting in the exact alignment that you want. With the fine thread, regular model engineer threads, 
you can't really do that so the washers will come in handy for that and the final things I got I ordered a piece of uh, silicone tubing that they use and a piece of the uh, glass tube for you know, making my own uh, sight glass water gauge and um, pretty pleased this all, this is all extensively wrapped together and and it came in perfect condition so I'm very pleased with that and we'll sh we'll talk more about that later but um, hope you enjoy seeing that stuff all right folks I think I'm gonna make this the last segment of this week's episode I'm inside the house obviously and not in the workshop but the one thing I wanted to show is I'm kind of planning out my next things which would be the grate and the ash pan and I wanted to show the uh, oh and then of course stuff from the smoke box over here which I've made Xeroxes of these prints that I bought I bought these from GLR Kenyans and they were the same company that supplied some of the castings the cast saddle that you'll see but I just want to say that it's so much better to have the actual prints that you can look at um, a lot more detail and a lot easier to read than some of the drawings in the book um, so I uh, highly recommend buying a set of prints if you're going to undertake a project like this. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode and I look forward to seeing you around on the next one. Please ask any questions, give me a thumbs up, pass the word. We're trying to grow the channel. Thanks everybody. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great week.